Pastor Chooks Obina Ogoye. Pastor Chooks is the lead pastor of Resurrection Life Church in Johannesburg. He is a passionate teacher and preacher of the Word of God and has been blessed by God with the uncanny ability and gift to explain and unpack deep and complex spiritual truths in very easy to understand and apply formats. Pastor Chooks has been involved and active in marketplace ministries. He's an entrepreneur and business consultant with an avid passion for raising other entrepreneurs and business leaders. He has taught and facilitated many leadership and entrepreneurship courses and seminars. He is the host of broadcast programs on Facebook, YouTube, and several podcast channels. Living the life with Pastor Chooks, the amazing power of woman. Thank God it's Friday. Good evening. Welcome to another Friday when we hang out on Thank God It's Friday. It's our time to share wisdom on relationships. It's our time uh, to seek God's word regarding relationships, you know, all kinds of relationships for single people, for married people, relationships with people at work, relationships with brothers and sisters, relationships with mentors, relationships, all kinds of relationships. When Fridays is our relationship wisdom uh, broadcast when we teach God's word regarding wisdom for relationships. All right. Today, I'm going to start a series that will run for a number of episodes. Okay, I'm going to run a number of episodes on this topic. Uh, the, the, the topic is a very, very interesting topic. Uh, and I know it's not popular these days to talk about something like this, but we have to talk about it uh, because um, the Bible, the Bible teaches on it, and we need to talk about it. It's something that a lot of people are struggling with. A lot of people are struggling with. And what is it? Establishing and maintaining appropriate sexual boundaries in relationships. Establishing and maintaining appropriate sexual boundaries in relationships. You can see why. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's, let's start somewhere. Ecclesiastics chapter 10 verse 8. Ecclesiastics chapter 10 verse number 8. That's where we start in Ecclesiastics chapter 10 verse number 8. The Bible reads, it says, He who digs a pit will fall into it. And whoever breaks through a wall will be beaten by a serpent. He who digs a pit will fall into it. But whoever breaks through a wall, a wall is a boundary. A wall is a boundary. So if you break a boundary, the serpent will bite you. The serpent is on the other side of the boundary. There's a boundary that you mustn't break. If you break that boundary, the serpent will bite. The serpent stands for the devil. The serpent stands for our enemy, the enemy, our adversary, the enemy of our soul. So, and he wants to bite. The Bible says, uh, uh, be, be, be sober and be vigilant for your adversary. The devil walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Satan is out to devour. The Bible says he came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So he's looking for who to chow. He's looking for who to destroy. But what we're reading in Ecclesiastes says, it requires a boundary wall to be broken, then settlement will bite. In other words, if the wall is up, the devil will not be able to bite. He will not be able to do anything. If the wall is up, he stays on that side, you carry on with what you are doing, you will not be able to bite. So we're talking about the necessity for establishing and maintaining sexual boundaries, appropriate sexual boundaries in relationships. Now, we have said in, in previous episodes, and I'm going to state it again, relationships are critical for destiny fulfillment. Relationships are very, very critical. When God wants to do something in your life, he sends you a relationship. That the, and these relationships can be, you know, across gender lines. God doesn't have to, you know, send you if you're a man, send you a man. And, or if you're a woman, send you a woman. He can, be, he, he can send a man to a woman. He can send a woman to a man. So, so we have to have relationships across gender lines. Even now we're talking about um, um, 
sexual boundaries. Even men and men are having sex. Women and women are having sex. So the principles apply. There are sexual boundaries that must not be crossed. See, sex is a gift from God, but only for marriage. The Bible is very clear on that. The Bible is very, very clear on that. That sex is reserved only for marriage, not for people who are engaged. People who are engaged are not married. Until you are declared man and wife, whether it's by, by the state or by the church or by, you know, the families, in other words, our culture. These are the three, three ways that people get married. Either via the state, you know, you go to the marriage registry or, or a marriage officer, or the church joins you, or culture, you know, the culture and the, and the traditions of our people you know, have every culture has their own marriage rights and so on and so forth. So, if you have not been married, you are not allowed to have sex. Sex is for married people. Sex is for people. So, somebody, somebody said once to me, you know, but I have already promised to marry her. So, uh, she's my wife. No, she's not your wife. A promise of a marriage is not a marriage. Until the parents can acknowledge that our daughter is married. Or our son is married. There's no marriage. Or the church, until the church acknowledges, your pastor, the elders of the church say, you are or, um, um, legally and officially married. You're not married. Or the state. And they will issue you a marriage certificate. So if you don't have a marriage certificate, you're not married. All right. So relationships are necessary for Establishing the purposes of God. There are destiny helpers that God is going to send you and they are from the opposite sex. There are destiny helpers that God is going to send you and to be able to fulfill their agenda or the agenda of God for, for sending them into your life, you have to relate with these people. And these people, you cannot have sex with them because except that you are married and you are not supposed to be married to more than one person. It's only the person that you are married to that you're supposed to express any sexual desire and sexual activity with. So there are hundreds, maybe thousands of relationships that you are going to be involved in you know, in the course of your journey to the fulfillment of God's purposes for your life. All of those relationships, only one, only one is the one that is supposed to lead to sexual activity the one that leads to marriage and it's after the marriage that sexual activity is supposed to be engaged in in other words all other relationships must have solid boundaries solid boundaries regarding sex sexual boundaries must be solid that you don't cross them so i want to teach tonight and for the next couple of episodes how to establish and maintain those boundaries so that the value and the blessing that the relationship is supposed to deliver is not corrupted. The enemy, listen, if God is using relationships to lift you, to fulfill destiny, to help you, I can guarantee you now that the devil wants to corrupt that relationship. The moment sexual involvement is entered into in a relationship that is not a marriage I don't even care if you are dating someone or, you know, you are officially engaged. You are not married. As long as you are not married, once sex gets in into a relationship, that relationship is compromised. That relationship is corrupted. The Bible, Bible speaks of he that sows to the flesh will out of the flesh reap corruption. So there is corruption that you can sow into a relationship. You can put corruption into a relationship. And that corruption, you know, is going to mess things up for that relationship. So I am here today to shed light on these boundaries, why we need to have them, how we need to set them up, and we're going to talk about it for a couple of episodes, all right? So why are sexual boundaries important? Why do we need to establish and maintain proper and appropriate sexual boundaries in our relationships. The, number one, the relationship must remain pure for it to deliver what God had for it. 
the relationship must remain pure. For he, for the value, for the blessing, for whatever intentions God has for that relationship, for it to be delivered, the relationship must remain pure. The moment the relationship is corrupted, the value will no longer be delivered in the way that God wants it to be delivered. It's almost like, you know, it, uh, water, water coming through the pipe into the house. In Johannesburg, we are able to drink water from the tap. But if your tap is rusted, if your tap is, I mean, sorry, if your pipe is rusted and your pipe is rotten, pure, clean water can leave uh, Jobek water from the reservoir coming. And then it gets into your area and the pipe is rotten. The water that will be delivered at your house cannot be drunk. The value of the water, which lies in, the, in its purity, has been compromised. That's the same thing. Once sexual involvement is engaged in, in a relationship other than a marriage relationship, the value is compromised. The value is compromised. Sometimes it is, it is completely destroyed. Yes. Sometimes, you know, and that's why Satan, he pushes people to get into premature sexual exposure in the relationship. The value is corrupted. Please hear what I'm saying. I know the world says it doesn't matter. In fact, some people even think, oh, well, even if we're, you know, even if we have sex now, since we're going to get married, you know, it's okay. No, it's not okay. Because even if the relationship ends up in marriage, the fact that you corrupted that relationship earlier on in your days of courtship, let me tell you what it is. You've sown seeds of mistrust into the marriage mistrust deep deep mistrust it's there in the foundation of your marriage your husband will continuously suspect you your wife will continuously suspect you and that's so unhealthy that's so unhealthy to be able to build any solid marriage so if the relationship doesn't end up into in marriage it's still messed up because one sex is involved when it's not supposed to be a marriage relationship. It's messed up. It's messed up. I'm not saying it cannot be recovered. It can be recovered. But if you slept with this person, you can't see them the same way as you saw them before. Oh, yes, your perception of them is changed. You know, they, they, they say it in legal language. You are now can You've known them carnally. <laughs> You've known them carnally. So, so your perception, the way they see you, the way they took you before is completely changed. So the, the nature of the relationship has been altered by reason of that inappropriate sexual involvement, inappropriate sexual entanglement. It, the, 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 the nature of the relationship is messed up. So this is why you have to, you know, watch it. The boundaries have to be there. Sex outside of marriage is destructive. You know, people have you know, made this uh, 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 analogy that sex outside of marriage is like fire outside of the fireplace. If you take fire out of the fireplace and put it anywhere else in the house, it will burn down the house. But if you leave the fire in the fireplace, it can burn for two hours, three hours, four hours, and warm the house, and the house is nicely warm in winter. And, and the fire stays there contained in that place, Everything is beautiful. But take that fire out and go and put it on the bed. You burn it. You burn the bed and you burn down the house. So, the same principle, the same way, sex taken out from the context of marriage to any other relationship burns it down. It burns it. It burns it. It's destructive. It hurts the soul. Now, let, let me show you scriptures. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. I know the devil says to people, it doesn't matter. Do it and God will forgive you. Yes, God forgives. He does forgive. He's a very forgiving God. But there are, there are consequences. Sin has consequences. It's true. Sin has consequences. Look at what the scripture says. In Proverbs chapter 6 verse 32. Whoever, whoever commits adultery with a woman lacks understanding. In other words, this person is an idiot. He lacks understanding. He who does so destroys his own soul. He who does so destroys his own soul. To destroy your soul is not the same thing as to hurt your soul. 
it is to, you know, if you destroy something, you, you, it's shattered. Only the power of God can reconstruct what has been destroyed. And that's what happens when inappropriate sexual uh, 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 encounters are, are engaged in. You bring destruction to your own soul. That's what the Bible says. I didn't say it. It's in the Bible. But the, the devil hides. We, we're talking about destroying your own soul. The devil does not want people to know this truth. So he keeps telling them, you know, it's just sex. It's just sex. There's, there's no big deal to sex. There's a big deal to sex. Look at what the Bible says. He who has inappropriate sexual engagement or involvement with a woman destroys his own soul. Sex outside of marriage destroys. It destroys the soul. Your soul is the seat of your intellect, your will, and your emotions. When, when your soul is destroyed, it affects you in how you function. But the devil will hide that fact. He will hide it and, 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 and keep it away so that you are deceived to think it doesn't matter. It's only sex. It's not just only sex. There are consequences to inappropriate crossing, inappro um, um, crossing sexual boundaries. There are consequences for inappropriate sexual involvement with people. The only person you're supposed to be sexually involved with is your wife, your legally married wife, or your legally married husband. End of story. But let's, let's see more scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. I'm reading from the New King James Version. The Bible says in verse 18, it says, flee sexual immorality run from sexual immorality run he said flee why would god tell you to flee god is telling us to flee because it's dangerous because it hurts it hurts he said every sin that a man does is outside the body but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body can you see that every other sin lying stealing is a sin done against outside of your body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins is against his own body. The book of Proverbs says destroys his own soul. So you sin against your body, you destroy your soul. So that five minutes or ten minutes of pleasure produce, is like poison. It's like someone putting poison into sweet food. Delicious food, but there's poison. Tasteless poison is put inside tasty food. You eat the food and enjoy it, but the poison goes to kill you. And that's what the enemy wants to obscure people from seeing. And he says, no, there are no consequences. He who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. And if you sin against your own body and you destroy your own soul, what are you doing to yourself? What are you doing to yourself? Look at what the Bible says. Verse 19. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, who you have from God, and you are not your own? So, so this body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Taking this body to plug into inappropriate sexual engagements, inappropriate sexual encounters, is defiling the temple of the Holy Spirit. And what can we do without the Holy Spirit? We are nothing outside of the Holy Spirit. This is why it's so important that you allow the Word of God to help you, you know, um, create boundaries and shape boundaries and sustain boundaries. All right. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. The Bible says, flee. Also, youthful lusts. Run away from youthful lusts. He's talking about sexual, sexual lusts. He said, run, flee, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. This is, this is Apostle Paul writing to a young pastor, Timothy. Flee youthful lust. Run away from it. it there's something. 
it, this thing must be extremely dangerous for God to be warning in several places in Scripture. Run away from it. Run. You can't be wiser than God. You can't know it better than God. The God who created your body and put sexual desire inside of you, you can't know it better than him. He says, run away from sexual immorality. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6 verse 13. Romans chapter 6 verse 13. Look at this. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Your body. That's what he's talking about. Your members. Your members, you're talking about your body, your body parts. Bible says, present your body as instruments of righteousness. It's your responsibility not to yield your body as an instrument of unrighteousness. Don't allow your body be, to be used or use your body to perform unrighteousness. Don't allow your body to lure people from righteousness. My body is an instrument of righteousness. In other words, my body helps people walk with God. So, dear sister, when you are exposing skin and exposing flesh, what is it doing to the people around you? What is it doing to your boyfriend? What is it doing to brothers in the church? If you are staring up inside of them um, feelings and thoughts leading to unrighteousness, are you doing what is right? Are you doing what is right? This is why you have to take responsibility for what you are doing. The Bible says if you eat meat and your eating meat causes your brother to fall, the Bible says do not eat meat. There's nothing wrong with eating meat. But if my eating meat is going to cause another brother to sin, then I must avoid eating meat for their sake. So I know, yes, you say you have liberty to wear what you want to wear. But do not allow your body to become an instrument of unrighteousness, an instrument that promotes unrighteousness in other people. Don't lead people to sin. <laughs> Do not lead us into temptation. It's a prayer. Don't lead people into temptation. Don't lead people into temptation. If God has blessed you with a voluptuous body, cover properly. Wear appropriate clothing that does not stir up sexual lust in the people around you. Don't, don't do it. It's not Christian. It's not right. No, it's not. It's not. You have a responsibility to make sure that the people around you are not being led to sin, led to unrighteousness. Why? Every member of your body must be an instrument of righteousness. Don't use your body parts to perform unrighteous acts. No. Don't contribute towards unrighteousness with your with the with parts of your body. No, it's not. Look at the scripture. Present your members as instruments of righteousness, not instruments of unrighteousness. Don't use, no, don't do that. Present yourselves. All right, let me show you more scriptures. Let me show you more scriptures. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. I see. I see you coming into liberty. I see you coming into freedom in Christ Jesus to live the life that God has called you to live, to welcome wonderful relationships that God is sending to you, mentors or people for you to mentor or people to mentor you, people to uh, um, assist you, people to make contributions in your life and, you know, nudge you in the direction of your destiny. I see those relationships coming as you begin to understand these things and, and begin to put appropriate boundaries appropriate boundaries look at colossians chapter 3 verse 5 say therefore put to death your members which are on the earth and look at what the members are fornication uncleanness passion evil desire and covetousness which is idolatry it's you know the first time i saw the scripture it really bothered me that a member of me is fornication a member of me is uncleanness a member of me is evil desire, passion, covetousness. Can you see? It's there in our flesh. <laughs> it's there in our flesh. But Bible says, keep it dead. 
put it to death and keep it dead. Mortify the flesh. Keep the flesh under. Keep it dead. Kill the flesh. Do not allow the flesh to rule you. In other words, everybody has flesh and there is fornication there. And he says, don't stir it up. Don't keep it dead. So, when you are in a relationship, what are you doing to the brother or to the sister? Are you waking up things that God said should stay dead? Are you provoking lust, provoking, you know, by the things that you are doing? No. We have a responsibility. Listen, anything you are doing that is waking up the things God said must remain dead is breaking the hedge, is crossing the boundary, is opening a hole in the wall, and the serpent is going to bite. Surely, the serpent is going to bite. So if whatever you are doing, you are touching her at certain portions of her body, you are stirring up things. You know, there's a scripture in the book of uh, uh, Song of Solomon. It says, do not waken up love before it's time. Do not waken up love before it's time. You can't, you can't put yourself in a position that stirs up things that cause you to lose control or that cause you to compromise yourself, that cause you to compromise your purity. No, he said, the Bible says it here. Do not, wait, do not wake them up. Keep them dead. Don't stir them up. It is this tearing up that you know brings people into a lot of problems. Let me keep going. I, I, I still have a few scriptures. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5 verse 17. The Bible says, Galatians 5. I, I read from 16 and go to 17. For I said then, walk in the spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The flesh has lust. Your flesh has lust. But the Bible says if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So, so walking in the spirit helps you maintain the boundaries so you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. I will come to that in, in, in full, you know, um, and much later in, in the series. Look at this in 17. For the flesh lost after the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. So there is a fight going on. Your flesh wants the sex. Your flesh wants the, the orgy. Your flesh wants the, you know, the, 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 all the, all the things. But your spirit does not want it. Your spirit wants to please God. Your spirit wants to walk with God. Your spirit wants to be sensitive to the voice of the spirit. Your, your spirit wants to respond and walk with the Holy Spirit to deliver things. But your flesh is wanting something different. And there's this war. There's this war. And the Bible says, it says that these are contrary to one another. That you do not do the things that you wish. So, so it's affecting your dreams. <laughs> it's affecting your forward propulsion. This conflict. So, so in order to win this conflict, Bible says, do not gratify the desires of the flesh. Only pursue the desires of the spirit so that the spirit can prevail and the purposes of God. Remember the purposes of God are in the spirit. They are proceeding out of the spirit. So, so you need to Pursue engagement in the spirit. You need to pursue it and leave the flesh. Don't feed the flesh. If you feed the flesh, the flesh will become very powerful and the flesh will flow you. The flesh will flow you and the flesh will hinder the, the things that God wants to do for you. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 13. The Bible says, no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. What the scripture is saying here, any temptation that comes to you, 
God will not allow something that is bigger than you to come to you. Uh -uh. God will not allow a temptation that is bigger than you to come to you. If he came to you, it is because you are able to handle it. That's what the Bible says. And even says that with the temptation comes a way of escape. So, uh, you know, it's very ridiculous when people say the devil made me do it. No, the devil doesn't make you do nothing. You decided to fall into the sin. God made a way. When the temptation came, the Bible says there's a way to escape. If you fall into the sin, you thought about it and you made up your mind you were going to fall into it. You made a decision. God showed you a way of escape, but you, did, you chose not to escape. You chose to be trapped in the sin and to roll over and fall into the sin and, and you know, mess yourself up. But I want you to know this. Scripture says, God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able to. And if by adventure you fall into sin, we have an advocate. We have an advocate. We have a merciful, a merciful God who is able to cleanse us, forgive us, lift us up, and, you know, keep us going. And if that is your situation, you fall into sexual sin, we can pray. You can reach out to us and we can, you know, pray together and we can guide you so that you don't fall into it again. The boundaries need to be erected. The walls need to be erected once again. And things need to be sorted out and things need to be done properly. Let me give you the last scripture for today. Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 3. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3. That's the last scripture for today. Ephesians 5, verse 3. The Bible says, But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for the saints. Let it not even be mentioned. It is so horrible that God says, Let it not even be mentioned among the brethren. Let it not be mentioned. That's how bad sexual sin is. God says, I don't want it to be mentioned among you people. So, today, let it suffice. I've shown you many scriptures. Sexual activity must remain in marriage. When we take it out of marriage and involve it in relationships, we corrupt the relationships. We, we mess up the, the purposes of God for those relationships. And we don't get the value, the real value we are supposed to get from the relationship. We are not getting it. But today, God wants to clean somebody, pick somebody up where they have fallen, clean them up, and restore them. You would like to, if you would like to get any kind of help from us, our number is coming up on the screen. Send the message there. Maybe we'll be, maybe we'll be able to pray for you, pray with you, and guide you. If you are tired of sexual sin and wants to be free, you need to stay, you know, um, um, logged in every Friday, 7 p.m. South African time for the next few weeks. We are going to really trash this subject, how to get out. If you're already in a sexual, sexually inappropriate relationship, how to get out, how to build boundaries. If you are, you know, in the, in the midst of a new relationship, Maybe a mentorship relationship or a brother-sister relationship. A brother-brother, I want to teach you how to build the boundaries properly so you don't cross these boundaries and mess up what God is trying to do. God bless you. Please like our, our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want to contact us, the number is on the screen, uh, plus 27814210835. Send a WhatsApp to that number and we'll be happy to come back to you and, and find a way to connect with you and pursue the purposes of God for your life. That devil is a liar. If you've even fallen into sin, it's not the end of the world. The blood of Jesus has been shed to cleanse and to restore all that have fallen. And we serve a God that is able to pick up his fallen children and help them stand. I'm done for tonight. Enjoy the weekend. God bless you. I'll see you next Friday as we continue this series, establishing and maintaining appropriate sexual boundaries in relationships. Good night. God bless you. Why are you still single? Do you feel you're not ready yet? Do you say it's not my time yet? Have you made mistakes in the past and now you're stuck in a complicated situation? Or perhaps you've given up totally on the idea of marriage? Why not join Pastor Chukso Goye, author of The Amazing Power of Woman book, and his wife, Pastor Toyin, the founders of the Power of Woman Academy, at the next Single Ladies Boot Camp to explore and answer your questions. A big miracle could be waiting for you. 
For more information, visit www.slbc.co.za or WhatsApp 081 421 0835.